Man Up, a program dedicated to inspiring and helping men live lives of heroic virtue. And now, it's time to Man Up. Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. I am Joe Stopulis, and today I am joined by Bear Wozniak in our Heroic Fatherhood series of the Start in Prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, all the evil spirits who prowl by the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Bear Wozniak back on the show today. I had him on recently discuss his newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? That was a few months ago. Go ahead and check that out on the podcast. Um, I've had him on, again, This is he was one of our first guests, honestly, back in the Father's Act days, and he's been involved with men's ministry for, for many, many years now. Again, this topic of fatherhood, not something that I have explicitly gone into with him, so I'm excited to uh, to pick his brain on what his relationship was like with his own father. Again, here's a man who exudes what many what many of us would consider masculine virtues. Uh, here's a guy who does many, many hard things, who puts the Lord first. Uh, his prayer life in my conversations with him uh, is paramount to what he does. He starts every day in prayer. Uh, his life is guided by prayer, yet he does all these things throughout the day uh, that are extraordinarily masculine. Um, and so obviously fatherhood, is arguably the most masculine thing you can do is to be a great father, uh, to to witness to the next generation, to your own children, and then to those around you, what it is to be a man. So I, I've seen Bear do that, obviously, in his own work. Um, but you know what, what was it like for him growing up? What was the example that a guy like Bear got? Um, so we're going to head around, head to a short break. When we return, I'll get into that with Bear on the other side of the break. Stick around and we'll be right back. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Ashworth Vision Clinic. Complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and urgent eye issues. 515-440-4610. AshworthVision.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Laser Home Services. Catholic owned and operated, Laser Home Services has been providing Central Iowa with electric, plumbing, heating, and cooling services since 2001. Learn more at LaserHomeServices.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from John Leonetti, EOS Implementer, the entrepreneurial operating system, helping businesses and organizations clarify, simplify, and achieve their vision. John.Leonetti at EOSWorldwide.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Skeffington's Formal Wear. In business since 1951, with locations in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Coralville, and Ankeny. Skeffington's Formal Wear, fitting you for life celebrations. Online at skeffingtons.com. Iowa Catholic Radio would like to thank our business partner, Edible Arrangements, for their support, offering fruit bouquets and gourmet dip chocolate treats. On the go or have it delivered for that special occasion, ediblearrangements.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Fitness by Design, your neighborhood fitness studio. Located in Des Moines, offering PH or fitness classes, private and semi-private training, beamer, and massage. Learn more at fitnessbydesigndm.com, 515-770-3844. Support for programming has been provided by Permar Security Services, a family-owned security company that provides full-service security solutions to homes and businesses throughout the Midwest. Learn more at permarsecurity.com. Thank you, Permar Security Services, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Welcome back to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. Excited today to have Bear Wozniak back on the show, this time as a part of our heroic fatherhood series bear welcome back to the show aloha joe i'm stoked about your new series <laughs> aloha so, to you. <laughs> so you know what you know what's the most heroic thing about a father i'm listening stepping on a lego in the middle of the night dude they gotta make <laughs> the... this is horrible As i never a... cussed i never cussed at all until until that moment, until that, moment. <laughs> that was the first time i cussed <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's something. Uh, they need to change the uh, the formula, I think, because uh, it's just it's horrible. Um, well, Bear, appreciate you being on the show. I think it's a, you're a, a perfect guest for us to have in this series um, as we're we're exploring this idea of fatherhood. Again, this my my show has has gone on a lot of different you know to cover many different subjects over many different years. 
Um, and obviously what your ministry is doing and what this series is doing match up very closely. And so I, I do start though on a little bit of a different route and I want to hear, uh -oh. I, well, I, you know, I, this is a little personal. I don't know if you talk about this kind of stuff regularly, but you know, I want to hear about your actual experience growing up with your own father. Uh, we'll get into, into, you know, your fatherhood, um, you know, specifically, but before that, I want to hear about what was it like growing up? It was, it was tough for me, uh, as a young man, uh, my dad was pretty aloof. Uh, although that changed dramatically, I was with him on the day that he really surrendered his life to Jesus and was praying with him. Uh, that was back in the Catholic charismatic re renewal days. And he went on to be a beautiful Catholic deacon. And, uh, in his later days, he became the sweetheart that, that St. John was, you know, he had always say children love one another. My dad just loved on the children in the back of the church and give them out holy cards and just became a sweetheart. But as a young man, my dad was, um, uh, uh, champion uh, basketball coach. He played basketball. He became uh, assistant superintendent of schools, and uh, and and he was basically his. He was all about the job. You know, his he was he grew up in the Dakotas. My grandfather was a coal miner up in uh, uh, Wilton near Bismarck, and so he grew up. Hit his dad. He was glad if his dad didn't hit. You know, didn't strike his mom in a in a drunken rage. And so he didn't really have, understand what what fatherhood is. And so for me, I just I would I remember asking him my whole life, Dad, take me fishing. And it finally happened uh, a few days when I graduated from from Baylor in Waco, Texas. He they my my they, my parents lived there. They were about to move actually back to Minnesota, where my wife was, where my mom was from, and he, we went fishing. And I remember he. Uh, we went to this little stream. I didn't know what I was doing and we started fishing. And then a little while he walked down the stream to find a better spot for himself to fish instead of right where I was. And then it was kind of cool because um, about 20 minutes later, and I was very disappointed about that because I didn't want to fish. I wanted to fish with my dad, you know, he came back and he said, what am I doing? I came here to be with you. And so that relationship over time became very precious, very, very precious. But there remains that time uh, of being young and being with a father that was super workaholic type guy. And then when he was home, he was tired and angry. Uh, and, you know, he may not have seen himself in that light, but I know when I heard his car coming up the road, it had a very distinctive sound. Uh, this is in the, the Santa Cruz area of California. I was like, dreaded it just dreaded it when my dad was around. Uh, and because of that, I have a challenge with my relationship with God the Father. Uh, it's very hard for me to say Father. In fact, when I pray, I use the Hawaiian word for Father. Uh, in the sign of the cross, ke makua, ke 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 ame, ke ohana, hemalele, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So I say makua because it feels, it doesn't strike that, that, dis, that dissonant chord in my soul. And uh, but I, I have experienced the love of my of God, the father, and I have experienced profound love from my dad uh, during when by the time I was about 21 or 22, I saw my dad go through this dramatic change. And then in, in his diaconate formation, it wasn't so much the theological change in him. I saw him change in in humility because he used to treat my mom not as good as I would have liked for him to. Uh, he paid a lot more attention to her, and he loved on her uh, in those years. Uh, just, just loved on her, loved on her. Bear, that's that's like an episode in itself. I mean, those conversion stories of people who have been struck by the Lord and have a one eighty change of heart. I, I I could do, I could just make that a every single episode story, right? Of just hearing these yeah. stories, especially, especially around these charismatic renewal movements where people just they they're changed. So. Um, a lot of questions to ask though. So what were the, so this, and this is an interesting part of this, right? So some people have bad fatherhood experiences and then use that to say, I don't want my kids to have this experience. Others have really positive ones like I did. And they, they want to yeah. share what they had. So what were the things that you either, you know, that I would say what you wanted to emulate or what did you learn from your growing up well, that you then wanted to do with your own children? Yeah, well, my dad in every way was uh, live the cardinal virtues. Uh, he was, he, he, you know, even before he ex had the conversion experience, he was leading men to be, to be, to be men. And that way I walk in his shoes. He, he actually worked for a company. Uh, he, he left being assistant superintendent of schools to become a pub public speaker. And he helped people with the, the classic goal setting and, and uh, pursuing success and 
was a great uh, leader and motivate motivator in that way. And and I saw my my dad being diligent. I saw him develop over time uh, deeper relationships with other leaders. He he worked with presidents of companies. Uh, I mean, his, he, he began to develop Eagles Rest retreats uh, just for presidents of companies. This is before there was a Legatus, you know. And uh, so I saw in him. Uh, I, I never heard my father cuss. I think I heard him word, use one cuss word once, and that was a, because it was important to a joke, and it, and it wasn't really <laughs> that bad of a, a cuss word. I, I remember sitting in the uh, – we and he and I actually – this is in the later days, right? He and I went on a fishing trip to Canada with a couple of other guys. He, so he went through this transition. <clears throat> I would say um, it. I learned, I learned the cardinal virtues, uh, prudence, um, fortitude, self-mastery, justice. But uh, it was the faith, hope, and love that I learned from him, the theological virtues that I, I, I saw in him later on uh, in life when I was in my 20s. Well, I think first the first takeaway I've got from, from your story is that, you know, if if you're a, f- a father and you get kids in your 20s and you haven't dialed in on the father thing, it's not too late, right? I mean, I think oh, yeah. that, what's a cool first, first little takeaway there is that, you know, no matter where um, you're at in the spectrum, you know, it's never too late that you still had a great experience. Your father could have gone the other way. Instead, he... He dialed in on that. So we, let's talk about your own fatherhood here. So, you know, wh- how many kids do you have? Let's start there. Well, I have four, uh, okay. two that went to heaven through a miscarriage. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm with my wife, Cindy. It's our, it's my second marriage. And she, uh, she has a Hanai daughter. We call in heaven, a, a girl that she raised because her, her mother died. And so Cindy just kind of raised this young girl and we consider her our, our, our daughter, not a formal adoption, but, but and because when by the time I came into Cindy's life, this girl was in her twenties and out of the house. But we call her a Hanai daughter. We support her and love on her just like we do the other my other kids. So I had three sons. Okay. My oldest is a daughter. Okay. So talk to me then about maybe what what did you maybe learn from father when you were becoming a father when you were in the early stages? What were those things that you you changed in yourself? What were the things that you learned throughout your uh, your experience as a father? Well, I, this is going to be an interesting statement that I'm going to make. Uh, my, my, uh, you probably gathered that I'm an intense person. <laughs> yeah. And so, I, I, like I, you, 2016, when we interviewed the first time, Bear, I think. Yeah, I, I think you are probably too. <laughs> uh, and one of the mistakes I met, made with my children was being too intense with them spiritually. I, uh, I, w- I emphasize Jesus and, and that personal relationship with Jesus way too much. And so uh, what my oldest, it burned her out. And my three, uh, my, my daughter, my three sons have, have sustained themselves very beautiful, you know, in the Lord. But uh, the intensity of my fervor for the Lord, I mean, when I experienced my conversion, I was evangelist from that moment on. And so there's some, there's a way that uh, you have to moderate. Uh, and, and some people I know, they emphasize, you got to go to mass every morning with me or, they can cause their children to be too scrupulous or cause their children to just be burned out. Yep. And so we need to moderate our uh, for the, knowing their children and keep things light and keep things in, in moderation so that um, I don't know if I'm expressing myself well, but if I had that one thing to do over again, I would find an easier, lighter way yep. to communicate uh, the Lord's love. Yeah, I, so I think you're, you're saying you maybe you're overbearing on, on that side of the thing. And, and one one advice I I always have is that the best evangelization tool we can have, because obviously the most important thing we do as fathers is to get our kids to heaven, and we do that, yeah. and we help them live a good life by having this relationship with Jesus. The the way I think that is best communicated and passed down, in my opinion, is through an authentic relationship that I have, and they can see the joy in that. Right? They see the joy I have. In the, the the reason I get up in the morning and what I do, yeah, they, they can see, see you in that the morning. Without, without me beating into them, they can just naturally see that. Yeah, right? I think that's where that's the ticket there. So, well, you know, as an evangelist, I'm the kind of man who I could never be a pastor. I'd burn the flock out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So it's it's just kind of that intensity that goes along with being that evangelistic fervor, mm-hmm. uh, that exhortative type fervor. Uh, I needed to learn to moderate. Um, you know, for the, you know, just, just, just not expect so much. And the other thing is, is I tend to, from the, as a dad, I always thought, well, I got to prepare them for real life from the time they're two years old. I'm thinking yeah. they got to get out of this house and have a real life. I got to prepare them. And I think I over, um, 
I would over um, uh, challenge them in area in areas and instead of letting them learn sometimes by their own mistakes. I know John Wayne, there was a movie Hondo written by Louis L'Amour <clears throat> where there's a young boy that wants to play with his mongrel dog. And, uh, and John Wayne says, I wouldn't play. I wouldn't play with that dog, son. And then a few days later, the kid says, can I play with you do your dog? And he goes, well, do what you want to do. And the dog just <laughs> looked like he's going to bite his arm off. <laughs> the kid's mom comes out and goes, why did you let him play with the dog? And he said, I made me a rule. I let, I let people do what they want to do. So it's kind of like if I had been a little more, more like that, not always correcting, not always challenging. Giving giving um, a little more space, giving them yeah, chance. As they get older, a little bit more space. But even now with my sons in their 20s and 30s, one of them is in his 40s, uh, I have to bite my tongue and and uh, and realize that the whole key is to lead by example. Yep. You know, uh, no, well, not the whole key, but one of the biggest keys. So, so now having said that, I'm not giving people an excuse to to walk away and not not uh, be involved, not and not to tell, not to correct their children uh, and that sort of thing. But that just as a, as a father, I would have kind of eased up. And my, well, you know, I think so, my dad later on in life, he told me the same thing about the way he would have raised me. Yeah, well, I think your your personality type, right, leads to that, right, where it's very you're obviously a man of you do accomplishments and this that and the other thing, and so I think. Maybe the, the self-aware piece of this to the, the men listening is, you know, what what is your natural tendency? If you're naturally tend if your natural tendency is to be very laissez faire and sit back and not do anything, you might need to, you know, on the yeah. other side of that pull well, it back. Said. Whereas you are yeah. obviously you're on the other end of the spectrum. So you know, how some quick, maybe quick hitters. I don't know if we have you and I are very good quick hitters, but you know, where do you see fathers falling short most often today? Is there something when you're looking at this that you see that this is where you would give advice to fathers in general? Well, they're, they're just not there. I think the biggest thing is the absentee father. He's he's there in the he's there in the house, maybe, but he's not there. He's not engaged with his children. Uh um sitting around and watching TV, by the way, letting commercials play that shouldn't be played if you're watching TV and things like that. But I think the main thing is fathers just aren't there. Uh, and they're, and uh, um, they're not engaged in their children's life. They're not, they're not teaching their children. You know, I used to always walk with my kids. It's the way God wired me. But when I was with, with my kids, if I saw the hardware store, I could find uh, something in that hardware store to teach them about the Lord. You know, the Bible says, as you're on your way with your child, as you're walking along the way, teach your child in the way that they should go and they're in the older they will not depart so uh, uh, just to be present with your children and then of course to love on their mother you know love their mother um cherish their mother uh should be no question in their children's mind that you love their mom so it's an important issue here especially for guys with i mean not just young kids for all kids but you know how does a heroic father properly discipline his children that's a good, that's a really good point. Um, I think one of the prob problems that I had as a father is I would bring the discipline and then I would feel like you're grounded, you know, and then I'd feel so bad about it, <laughs> you know. So you, as a father, I think in the area of discipline, the key would be let your yes be yes and your no be no. Uh, be careful about the discipline, when you discipline and how you discipline. It shouldn't be done in anger. It needs to be done with love. Uh, but you have no right to discipline a child if you haven't first invested time with them. Mm, if you haven't wow. loved on them first and encouraged them and walked beside them and, you know, your kid's being bullied, so teach them how to fight. Um, if you haven't invested love and time with your son and daughters like that, then you have no right to discipline them. You haven't earned that right. Just putting food on the table doesn't earn that right. Well, I think this is one of the cool things about what, what I'm hoping this series, and, and I'm I'm an optimist in a lot of things. I'm, I'm I'm pessimistic about society in general, but I'm also optimistic in the in the kind of the the fervor of the church, especially the, the, these young fathers I'm seeing out there today. And I and I think you know the the stereotype of fathers in the 1950s that I mean your sounds like your grandfather or maybe whomever was of that era maybe the 1920s 30s 40s my dad, 40s, my dad was that, a, but then his kid. dad his dad as well yeah. like was a very I I brought the stuff home you raised the kids I'm gonna sit here and do my thing and I've got a lot of that in my family uh, on various parts yeah. that I've seen and so my point in that is. I believe that the, the fathers of today, we have been equipped with some really great tools within the church and from society as well to understand that we are not absentee fathers. We need to be, we have to like pull this, uh, 
this understanding that we need to be engaged, that showing up and bringing food is not enough. And I, I'm seeing that a lot more uh, from this generation. And again, now it's a matter of, of in addition to being there, raising good kids, uh, allowing them the freedom. So I think that's where we, we the struggle might be for my generation is we're trying to get so involved and a lot of people are too oh. Point where they don't even give freedom oh yeah yeah to grow. Kind of the opposite yeah but i remember i had a friend in high school when, when i was younger they knew the high school his name was jack windrell and i remember going to his house after school sometimes uh, when i was in high school like his, his house was very close to the high school and his dad coming home and playing catch with him warming him up before his son was going to go play pitch in a baseball game you know like a, this was not even a high school game so it's probably junior high and that man died a couple of years later. A year later, his father died. But all that time, I I said, I want my dad to play catch with me, mm. you know. But on the other hand, you got these guys that you, I, oh, it just makes me want to just throw up. I uh, I mentioned this guy was, I was down at the beach and this his kid picks up a sticks and starts hitting a bush with it like he's sword fighting. And the father said, "Son, we don't hurt, we don't hurt uh, nature." We don't hurt the bush. You see the guy. You see the children when they go to a restaurant. Uh, well, what do you want to eat, little Johnny? Uh, oh, you, you know, they're just like, it's like their whole world revolves around these children. Like the children become the bosses of the family. I was talking with Dr. Ray Garendi about this once. About how he's been, he's on the show. He's on the Heroic Fatherhood series as well. So another. Well, if you want to have a rookie, there. if you want to have a rookie like Dr. Ray on your show, <laughs> but he was talking. We were talking about how a father, one of the father's job is to protect the mother from the children. Because the children, I remember my mom used to say, "Boy, wait till your dad gets home." Oh yeah. yeah. So, so one of the jobs of a, a, a of the husband is to establish a tranquil environment in the in the home, help the mom to do that. And if a kid is 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 whining and complaining and going off on their mom, it's the man it's the man's job to to protect his wife, even from her own children. Well, Bear, I appreciate we had to a break. I appreciate the time. I thank you for joining me uh, on on the show today. Again, I think there's a lot of great takeaways from from what you're saying there. And and really, one of the things I got out from it is we have to we have to take a step back and evaluate: Are we finding this balance in fatherhood? Because I think you know you 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 swung so your dad was one way, and then you swung so hard the other way that making sure we're evaluating at all times: Are we are we doing this with charity? Are we doing this with love? And are we are we correctly balanced as a father? Anything to I mean, add to that before we had to break? Yeah, the way you learn to do that is by being in a brotherhood with 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 two or three men. Great, Maybe, you know, being in, being involved some way with brothers because they've all some of get some that are older, some that are younger. Like I have this group of four, three guys I used to always get together with for breakfast. They're not in this area anymore, but we still have a group text. And then I have my man cave, the Bear School of Manliness for men to join. And there's all these great men's groups that you can join. You don't need a men's group. You don't need anything formal. But get two or three guys that you get together with for a cigar and a shot of whiskey uh, once a month. Or you're having coffee with or breakfast with once a month early in the morning so you don't take family time away. And uh, and get real, get gritty and real with them about, man, I'm having trouble. You know, all of a sudden my, do- my daughter became a teenager. What happened? You know, it's. <laughs> And, and and you need brothers yep. to, to pray with you, to pray for your kids, and to give you their own their own wisdom. Yep. No, I I agree a hundred. And, and, and to remind you, do your stuff. You know, do the stuff. Do what dads do. You see them doing that, and and we we encourage and challenge each other to do the same. So I would say, be with a have a small group of men, two three men, maybe a dozen men, and like Jesus had, Jesus had his two best friends, John and Peter, but have that close knit and that bigger group of men that will challenge and encourage you kind of help you know the road you know 100 percent. bear appreciate the time thanks so much brother we love the men in iowa yep love it we're We're gonna head to a break we'll be right back okay my brother aloha Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Laser Home Services. Catholic owned and operated, Laser Home Services has been providing Central Iowa with electric, plumbing, heating, and cooling services since 2001. Learn more at laserhomeservices.com. With Christian values and located in the heart of Iowa, Spurgeon Senior Community offers residents a complete lineup of services and activities to live full, meaningful lives. Are you committed to delivering exceptional care and service? Consider joining the A-Team, dedicated to make a difference 
difference in the lives of seniors every day. Competitive salary, comprehensive health, and wellness benefits package, along with flexible work schedules to promote work-life balance. Learn more at SpurgeonManor.com. Thank you, Spurgeon Senior Community, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory. Caldwell Parish offers services that are unique to the individual while following the Catholic funeral rites. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. Confluence Brewing Company, a former home brewer's dream, is now a hub where great things come together. Situated south of Gray's Lake and easily accessible via the bike trail in Des Moines. Thank you, Confluence Brewing Company, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for programming has been provided by Permar Security Services, a family-owned security company that provides full-service security solutions to homes and businesses throughout the Midwest. Learn more at permarsecurity.com. Thank you, Permar Security Services, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Welcome back to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. My thanks again to Bear Wozniak for joining me on this episode of the Heroic Fatherhood series. Really, the one thing I want to point out, probably the most, pull out of that interview, was when we made the transition to you know what were those indelible marks uh, that his father left on him. I think this is really key for all of us. Is he said, "I learned the cardinal virtues from my father." Now, interestingly enough, a year ago I did a series on the cardinal virtues, right? Um, Prudence, justice, fortitude, temperance. Uh, and then the theological virtues, which I have done a show on, I should probably do one on that, of faith, hope, and love. And he said he learned those from his father. And, and he did not say he learned them because his dad sat him down and taught him the catechism. He said he learned fortitude, temperance, justice. He learned these things, prudence, from his father by the example of his father. That was kind of an aha moment for me saying, am I, am I teaching my children through my actions and my words, but how I act? Are they seeing a man who is just to those around them? Are they seeing a man who is temperate in his actions? Are they seeing a man who has the fortitude to persevere, to do the good things necessary uh, to live this Christian life? And and am am I being a prudent father? Uh, Do they see me being prudent in the decisions I'm making, whether it's how I spend my money, how I spend my time, uh, what I'm doing in the house? And then obviously in the theological virtues, I, I sure hope that we are striving to be men of faith hope, and love. I hope that they're seeing all those things, those seven virtues, the cardinal and the theological virtues, that that they can see that palpably in our life. I thought that's an interesting way. When I, That was the first thing that came to Bear's mind when I asked him what his father was about and what he remembered his father. And so I think that's a great lesson for each of us is that we take that framework of those cardinal virtues, those, those, those timeless truths in the cardinal virtues, and are we showing those to those around us, most especially our children, but also the other people in our lives who we can be fathers to. Thanks for joining me today on Man Up on IO Catholic Radio. I am Joe Stopulis. It's time to man up. Man Up, inspiring men to live out their call to holiness. 